Welcome back, Gary, Late Night V Twin. Tonight, we do a compensator upgrade in a late model twin cam. So you ask yourself, what's a compensator? Why do I need to upgrade it? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. So in the late model and early model twin cams, even in the Evos all the way back, Harley's used what they call a compensator. What the compensator's job is, is to absorb shock loads from the firing of the pistons as the power is transferred through the drivetrain to the rear wheel. In high horsepower, high torque applications, the Harley compensators, they smoke off. They just wear out. The reason we're doing these upgrades, a worn compensator can kick back on a, on a startup on the bike. We have excessive vibration that's transferred to the drivetrains. They're super noisy, but the worst part about a worn compensator is the amount of metal that's floating around in the oil environment in the primary that's gonna get into the bearings. So it creates a lot of wear and tear on the bike that we need to get past to make your Harley reliable, fun to ride, and well, you know, make it a badass Harley again. We're gonna perform this upgrade tonight, something you can do Obviously, you could take it to the Steeler, you could take it to your local favorite shop, but in this video, we're gonna show you how you can get it done on your own and save a bunch of money. So we're, I've already removed the, the footboard, uh, so now we're gonna take the cover off. And this is the inner primary. We're looking at the clutch, your drive chain, and I've got a, a manual adjuster in this. We'll talk about the differences between that at the end of the video. Uh, but this is the component that we're going to replace right here. This is the problem. This is the compensator. We've got to break this nut loose. A couple of special tools that we need to consider while taking this apart. First is the locking bar. Uh, Jim's or Harley have this part available. Uh, we also need, in this application, this is a Screaming Eagle compensator. We need the T70 Torx. This happens to be a snap-on socket. Uh, but anyway, we're going to need this to break this loose and this to hold it firm. This is under 180 foot-pounds of torque in the upgraded Screaming Eagle application. This bolt, which is this for the stock, is at a final torque value of 140. This takes a lot more torque. So we use a large breaker bar plus the locking bar to break this loose. If you do not have access to this locking bar, you can use this tool that goes between the chain drive and the sprocket on either side to lock the chain in place depending on loosening or tightening. We've got the lock bar in place. Now we're going to break this loose. So once we break this nut loose, we can take it off with a ratchet. We have moved to the regular ratchet so we can break this loose. Red Loctite on this. It's extremely tight. A note, you do not want to use an impact wrench on this specific bolt because what will happen is you will break the magnets loose in the stator so do not use impact tools on any of these two fasteners clutch and compensator we have to take apart the clutch nut that's behind the pressure plate here this is a non-stock application there's a couple extra steps involved in removing this. Once you take the adjuster screw out with the snap ring, you'll be able to see the nut on a stock clutch application and get to it without having to do this step. On the clutch applications, these fasteners are metric. These happen to be a five millimeter cap screw. Yours will be a 10 millimeter uh, bolt head on your stock clutch application. This is what we have to remove. This is the clutch adjuster screw. We need to remove this plate with this snap ring to get to the nut underneath. Remove the snap ring. Okay. 
This is the clutch adjusting screw. Now we will reassemble the outer part of the pressure plate so that we can get to this nut right there. Install my socket. I'll put these down with a couple of screws to give me some clamping force. These only need to be hand tight for doing this. Like I said earlier, with a stock clutch application, you won't have to do this step. If you have the SNS upgraded pressure plate or the Screaming Eagle upgraded pressure plate that's the same design, you will have to do this step. This is a left-handed fastener, so you have to turn your ratchet to the right-hand position to remove the nut. Install the lock bar. Be mindful of uh, not allowing the clutch discs to fall out in this step. We've removed the nut. At this point in time, I will reinstall the pressure plate so that we don't lose the clutch discs out of it. Just a couple of bolts will do. This is the clutch nut, hub nut, that we need to remove. I'll slide the compensator and clutch out assembly with the chain attached. Inner pulley assembly. Now we have the magnet. This is the outer part of the stator. This will stay intact in the motorcycle. Our new compensator that we're going to install is going to go right here. Let's talk a little bit about compensators. This here, stock versus the Screaming Eagle compensator. This happens to be the Screaming Eagle compensator from Harley. Very similar to the stock application. I don't have any around to show you, but this is the Screaming Eagle one, and I will show you how this works. The engine as it runs has a pulse to it as the cylinders hit. There's a minute amount of uh, play that gets absorbed in this, a lot like a clutch disc with springs. So we're controlling the amount of movement between the ramps and the driven sprocket. These compensators also have upgraded bearing plates. It's a great design. It just doesn't handle any torque. You can see the wear on the inside race you can also see the wear on the inside here, but really what's noticeable is, is, the, is the extreme wear in this ramp. This is where we have the problem of the compensator kicking back and making noise. With the upgrades that I've done with my engine as my drivetrain has evolved from a stock 103, then to a 113, then to a 117, I've been through three of these compensators, which are the Screaming Eagle components, they have not lasted. Um, I've tried the gear, uh, was not happy with the transfer of power and how the pulses went into the drivetrain. A little bit noisy, you can feel this. So I have now gone to the Dark Horse product. The Man of War compensator, it is a serviceable component. Unlike the Harley piece that is not, you cannot buy the individual pieces to replace or repair. You have to buy the complete unit for $400. This compensator, this is the tool from Dark Horse that actually takes apart this component. And the technology behind this uses these cushions. It takes this tool to remove the top part of the sprocket and the compensator. When you buy the tool, you get an extra set of bushings to service this component as it wears. Haven't had a review on any of these yet, um, but I have talked to people that have had these installed and they're extremely happy with them with their high output applications. Let's for a moment talk about how this compensator is less noisy and how it performs. In the stock compensator, which is very similar to this compensator here, you have metal to metal contact and you have all this movement on the ramps. 
in this application with the Man of War product, with the Dark Horse product, you can see in the exploded view, as this is disassembled, how you have, which is it's very similar in, in principle, you have this inner race that's right here, where these cushioned bushings are actually placed between the sprocket, the inner part of the compensator, and then encapsulated by the outer plate. With the Screaming Eagle upgraded compensator, off the stock compensator, you have the stock bolt, which is shorter than the upgraded bolt with the Screaming Eagle. You have to go back to the stock bolt. This Torx drive bolt will not work to clamp this down properly. You have to go back to the stock bolt. If you've discarded this from the Screaming Eagle or other compensator, the components that come with an aftermarket compensator, you will have to go back to the stock bolt. Before the installation of the compensator in the clutch, we have to install the spacer that goes behind the new compensator. Simultaneously. Simultaneously. They have to go on this way. The outer washer has a recessed area that faces outward. The old style stock compensator bolt then installed like this. Clean the surfaces in here with some brake cleaner. We're going to be installing red Loctite in this shaft. Blue Loctite for the clutch nut. Red Loctite for the compensator bolt. left-hand thread, remember that. <laughs> but now we're, we're loosening this in a, or tightening this in a loosening direction because it's left-hand thread. Oh brother. Right? <laughs> Thirteen sixteenth socket. This compensator upgrade in parts alone, about five hundred dollars. Um, the Screaming Eagle compensator, four hundred dollars, and then of course uh, whatever shop you decide to take it to, or if you're going to do it yourself, we're learning right here, so your labor is free. The engine pulses that are generated from the crankcase or from the crankshaft transfer through the chain into the rest of the drivetrain through the transmission. This component here, how it's designed, because it has constant contact between the inner and outer drive plates and the cushions, much smoother transition of power, no noise emitted from this compensator because it's under constant tension with the insulators unlike the metal-to-metal -metal contact that we've seen with the stock style or upgraded mechanical compensators. You're gonna need a foot-pound torque wrench to put these back together, torque them down. 70 to 80 foot-pounds on the clutch nut. Mind you, they're left-hand threads. Lock bar in place. Our socket is installed behind the pressure plate. We need to clamp this pressure plate back down because it's going to slip when we try and torque this with the bar in place. You will run into this problem with this style pressure plate. With the stock pressure plate, like I said, you don't have to remove that. You'll be able to get to this nut without these extra steps. But for anybody that has these style clutches or pressure plates, this is the step that you have to do. So we're going to Tighten this back down because we have to put the clutch back into its clamping engaged position. 
because we are going to be applying torque to this and it's going to want to slip if you don't torque this plate back down. You will not be able to torque the nut to specification. Positioning bar. Left-handed thread. 80 foot-pounds. Now we will have to remove the pressure plate to get our socket back out, install our clutch adjusting screw, and move forward from there. Removing the last screw so that I've taken the pressure plate loose so that I can get the socket out. Pressure plate, spring plate. This is torqued now. Now, we can install our clutch adjuster. Because we have not changed anything in the clutch components, this adjustment that's already been determined does not have to be changed. We'll save this procedure for clutch adjustment in a Harley 101 for another video. Do not change any adjustment with this because your clutch is already adjusted. Just install the piece as it came apart, and install it back into the bike, Two ears on here, obviously slides back into its slot. Then we have to install the snap ring back into the clutch to retain the, the outer adjuster. Now, we take the clutch spring. This is a component of the pressure plate. It's the spring plate that these outer weights, centrifugal weights, press against so that they're not rattled, they go underneath between the fingers on the clutch spring, like so. This clutch is uh, a performance upgrade that I've used in my motorcycle. Your stock piece won't have this. Little dab of blue Loctite on all the fasteners. Remember that these are metric. This front bolt has a torque procedure. Goes to 100 foot-pounds first, you back it off a half a turn, and then you torque it to 140 foot-pounds. That's weird. Yep, that's the Harley way. Installing our lock bar, going, going to 100 foot-pounds. We will back this off 180 degrees. Flip your lock bar around to the other side. tension back down, move your torque wrench to 140 pounds, foot-pounds, lock bar back in place, and that's our final torque procedure on the crankshaft bolt. I would like to make a note about this fastener and how we torqued it. Harley-Davidson specifies that you torque this bolt to 100 foot-pounds and back it off 360 degrees and then retorque the fastener to 140 foot-pounds. I backed it off a half of a turn. Harley recommends that you do the 360 degrees. The reason that they suggest this or why this is the procedure is so that you do not gall the threads with the Loctite while torquing this down in place. We have to set up the primary chain adjustment. Harley-Davidson uh, in the manual uh, suggests 5 eighths of an inch play up and down in the upper part of the chain in a manual adjuster. I am using the twin power manual adjuster and this clutch setup uh, from a dark horse for the compensator 
recommend that you run this from half inch to five eighths and I run it right about half inch. The stock Harley Davidson adjuster, which we'll cover in another video, um, is a poor design because it obviously ratchets and uh, does not allow the chain tension to remain at that 5 8 play. Um, what it does is it puts extensive pressure on not only the compensator, but it also puts extensive pressure on the inner primary bearing behind the clutch. So it's added wear that we don't need. That's why I have chosen to go with the twin power style uh, chain adjuster, uh, Baker. There's a bunch of them on the aftermarket. I prefer these over the stock Harley component. So this adjustment has been backed off to make it easier to install the adjuster underneath the primary chain. So we need to adjust this measurement to approximately a half an inch. What I do is I take a steel rule and you're gonna actually see the amount of play that this has just gently resting the chain, making a note of where it stops on the, the rule. And you can see how much adjustment needs to be taken up. That's almost three quarters to almost an inch of play. So how we do this, this upper or this middle screw that's right here, you can see the, the little black 3 8 head on this. We're going to adjust this up. So as we go up on the adjuster, as this expands this upper shoe from the mount, we're going to be taking up the slack and you can actually see the chain starting to raise up. And you'll want to check the adjustment. So I'm, a, I'm approximately an inch and an inch and a half to an inch. That's, that's about where you want this. You want about five eighths of an inch to a half inch of play in that. There's my half inch adjustment right there. So that's the proper amount of slack to run in this chain. Um, some people run them at 5 8 where Harley says to adjust them to. I like to run them just a tad tighter. Once we lock this adjustment down, this wear, or excuse me, uh, this movement in the chain is going to remain the same. The stock Harley tensioners keep tightening. They don't back off. So this is always banjo string tight which applies a lot of stress to these components between here and here. So I'm taking this lower lock nut, I'm, I'm holding the adjusting screw with a 3 8 wrench and I'm taking this 9 16 wrench and I'm locking down two generations of twin cams. The early twin cams had an adjustable uh, tensioner in here. So you would actually set that tension and forget it. I prefer this adjuster over the stock one only because you have control over this final adjustment. You lock it into place, it stays, this adjustment stays. Uh, less wear, way less noise. Uh, you won't notice any performance difference between the two, uh, but you will notice a performance different in the money in your wallet as it flies out to replace this inner primary bearing and accelerated wear on the compensator. New outer primary gasket. Install that on the dowels. We've got our cover cleaned and prepped and ready to go. Line that up on the dowels, drop that into place. And then we start installing our fasteners. These will be torqued to 120 inch pounds. We now have the outer primary installed, gaskets installed, bolts are all hand tight. They go down with 120 inch pounds in a varying pattern, crisscrossing pattern. So we'll torque these fasteners down. We need to remove the outer inspection cover where the clutch is behind because we need to put oil in the crank or the, uh, the primary case. There's two different oil measurements requirements for this application when you service this. First, you have to remember on a normal service, when you drain the oil out of this, there's gonna be a certain amount of oil that stays in the primary case. Um, in a normal service, we put 35 ounces in that uh, primary. In a dry 
service, which we have performed because we've removed the outer cover completely and drained all the oil out of the primary, we need to put 45 ounces of oil in here. These little service funnels are really great. They just slide in here like that. I take a graduated cup that has pints, ounces, uh, uh, milliliters, things like that. Yeah, this is like a two-stroke oil adder cup, pretty common in the motorcycle industry. So we're gonna put 32 ounces. This is a non-synthetic oil. I'm required not to run synthetic oil because of the type of clutch that I have. Some clutches do require synthetic. This one does not. So it, as a synthetic oil, is slipperier than the oil I'm running. I happen to use a Lucas product, synthetic, non-synthetic in the motorcycle. It's a SAE 2050. It's a Harley Davidson runs the same type of oil in there. Their setups, this is 32 ounces, obviously, because it's a full quart. I'm just going to add the whole quart into the primary case. Uh, seven more ounces of oil to get us to 45 from 38. So I will be adding seven ounces into this graduated cylinder funnel. Pop the top on a fresh bottle. We want to look at the ounce scale, which is fluid ounces here. Going to run it up between, obviously, uh, six and eight. We're going to put it right there in seven. That's going to achieve the 45 ounces that's required in the dry service. Too much oil, you're going to have shifting problems. Too not much or not enough oil, you're going to have wear problems. Put all the oil into the primary case. Really simple. Like the outer surface, make sure it's nice and dry. Install our derby cover. The torque values on these outer inspection cover nuts is 84 to 108 inch pounds. I'm going to put them down at 100. Just a star pattern. It's a number 27 Torx. All right, this job's complete. Uh, Sands installing the running board. Uh, really, really simple procedure to do this. Uh, I think the most important thing besides quality tools and the special tools that sometimes you will need for doing these types of repairs or upgrades on your bike, the proper service manual. It's really important that you have all the torque values. They give all the tool numbers from Harley Davidson. They are The tools are available at the dealer. You can also buy them through gyms and other uh, outlets to get the tools to do these types of jobs. Um, it's really important that you have the right stuff to get the job done correctly. Oh look, my stock compensator. I saved these for a buddy of mine that makes metal sculptures because they're junk. We're done. Compensator's in place. Super reliable now. We're not going to have any issues with noise, wear, performance. Uh, this, is, this is my personal bike. Got a 117 inch motor in it, makes lots of horsepower, good torque. The most important thing to remember about this whole job, first off, have access to the shop manual. You really need to own one if you're gonna be working on your bike and you're gonna be doing all these upgrades on your own. Um, the next thing is, obviously you're gonna need some special tools, good quality torque wrenches. They're gonna vary between foot pounds and inch pounds. They're also, a higher low value so you're gonna you know I use three different torque wrenches in this application from half inch drive 
two different three eighths drive ones and obviously a, a quarter drive uh, inch pound wrench. Also, special tools, whether it's this lock tool here or the, the factory style lock bar. Oh yeah, Screaming Eagle. And then obviously if you've already done the, the uh, Screaming Eagle upgrade, you'll need this to get it out. If the dealer's done it or you've done it, or you own a late enough model bike that already has this from the factory, you will need this T70 uh, uh, Torx to get that apart. You will also have to purchase separately the stock earlier style short bolt if you have the Screaming Eagle style compensator bolt because it is longer, it won't work. Got about an hour to hour and a half to take care of this job. Shop labor time is going to vary between independent shops and your Steeler. Uh, the parts themselves, the compensators, $489. You've got gaskets, oil involved in this. So it's about, plan to budget about 600 bucks or so to do this job. So we've got some more videos coming your way. Got an M8 engine, complete engine replacement coming. Uh, we've got some handlebar jobs coming in. We've got exhaust jobs with tuning coming in. If you guys have ideas on videos that you want to see done, Write down in the, in the comments, ask a question, uh, suggest a video that we can do, and we'll, we'll try and get to it. I'll try and get you all the answers that you need. Um, I really can't stress enough how much I love this lifestyle. Been riding Harleys for a really long time, been wrenching on them, I think, even longer because of stuff like this. But hey, you know, we all have to start somewhere. Um, I always say, buy once, cry once when it comes to your tools and also the upgrades that you do. Buy top shelf parts. Don't rely on the dealer to throw all this crap and back in your bike. It's stupid, it's wasted money. Find a shop that you can trust or trust in yourself to get it done. Make that bond with the bike that you, know, you made the investment in and now you own the American dream and you own the legend. And why not become part of that by investing in yourself to wrench on these things and get it done yourself, so. Anyway, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see what we can do for you here at Late Night V-Twins.